live from Case at 12. The news at 530 starts right now. Up first tonight, a man under arrest for allegedly impersonating a police officer and burglarizing a home. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says Salvatore Alfieri made his way into a home on the far west side while dressed in police tactical gear. Now, Lee Waldman was outside of the Sheriff's Office where Alfieri was walked in front of cameras on his way to jail. 38 year old Salvatore Alfieri kept his head down and stayed quiet as he was loaded into the back of a waiting BCSO unit. Sheriff Javier Salazar said Alfieri is facing a slew of charges, including impersonating a public servant and burglary of a habitation with intent to commit a felony. More charges could be pending. All of this stemming from an incident on the far west side Friday evening. According to the sheriff, Alfieri was dressed in a mask and police vest when he knocked on the door of a home claiming to do a probation check. He convinced the woman at home to let him inside. That's when he became threatening and took several cell phones and a large sum of cash. The sheriff added Alfieri was also armed. Today, the sheriff's office posted on social media about the incident, sharing a photo of Alfieri. That led to a tip that the 38 year old was at an intersection on Roosevelt Avenue waiting for a lift ride. San Antonio police arrived and were able to perform a traffic stop and take Alfieri into custody. Sheriff Salazar said it was crucial they got Alfieri off the streets. The information that we were developing is that he was he was desperate for money. And so the concern obviously was that he was going to do it again and maybe the next resident wouldn't be so fortunate and something bad would happen. Tonight on the night beat, the sheriff offered information on how you can prevent this from happening to you and ways that you can properly identify a real member of law enforcement. At the sheriff's office, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Other stories we're following this Sunday, a shooting on the city's west side left one man dead, another injured. It all happened around midnight on San Ignacio Avenue and Riva Street. Police arrived at a home in the 400 block of San Ignacio. That's where they found a man lying on the front yard with a gunshot wound to his face. He was taken to the hospital in stable condition, but further down the road, they found a stalled vehicle and a 28 year old man dead in the street. Investigators found a trail of blood coming from where that other man was located. The investigation tonight continuing. Another shooting overnight, this one on the city's northeast side in a church parking lot. It happened just before three this morning on O'Connor Road. Two officers were sitting in a patrol unit in that church parking lot. That's when they say a driver sped up to them and someone in the car opened fire. One of the officers returned fire and the suspects took off. Neither of those officers were hurt. The vehicle was later found abandoned and was impounded. Police are still looking for those suspects. Call it a sign of hope. Agricultural Secretary Tom Vilsack on hand this morning as that first flight carrying much needed baby formula arrived in Indiana. ABC's Faith Abube reports soldiers at Ramstein Air Base loaded that specialized formula that was manufactured in an FDA approved facility in Germany. The first flight of Operation Fly Formula touched down in Indiana on Sunday. The military cargo plane carrying 78,000 pounds of baby formula. That's the equivalent of up to 500,000 eight ounce bottles. President Biden tweeting the news, writing, quote, our team is working around the clock to get safe formula to everyone who needs it. On board that flight, specialized formulas, which are in grave demand, meant for babies unable to digest formula made from cow's milk. Our patients and families across the country are in urgent need of this formula, and we're grateful for this shipment that's arrived so our families can provide the nutrition that their children need. Gerber's hypoallergenic formula also expected to arrive in the coming days. The formula will now be taken to a Nestle Gerber distribution center for a standard quality control check. That's according to an administration official. And then it's going to go on trucks uh, and it's going to be delivered in hospitals and uh, home health care clinics all across uh, the country. Data shows the formula shortage is worsening. Nationwide, an average of nearly 45 percent of baby formula has run out. And if the current trend holds, some major stores could run out of stock completely by the end of the month. I see moms next to me and dads next to me facing the same problems and you can cut the desperation with a knife. Nothing else matters. The world stops until you find that formula for your child. On Saturday, President Biden signed the Access to Baby Formula Act, allowing those who use the federal WIC nutrition program to buy the formula they can find. Secretary Vilsack says another formula flight will be coming into Dallas Airport in the Washington, D.C. area later this week, and an abatement of the formula shortage should be seen within the next 30 days. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington.
With cases of COVID rising across much of the country, the Biden administration is planning for a likely wave of COVID-19 infections this fall and winter by ensuring both a new generation of vaccines to access treatment and testing. Officials say cases are rising in nearly every state. The CDC says more than 100,000 new cases are being reported every day. COVID related hospitalizations have risen about 24% from the previous week. Health experts say COVID-19 vaccinations are key. If you have not gotten vaccinated in the last five months, if you have not gotten boosted, uh, you need to go out and do that now. Children five and younger still not eligible for vaccines. Health officials say a decision on that from the FDA could be made in the coming weeks. They're also once again urging everyone to wear masks indoors. Back here in Texas, so many people attended Jeep weekend on Crystal Beach in Galveston County this weekend. Emergency services had trouble keeping up. Over the whole weekend, officials say 38 people were hospitalized for different reasons. Eight of them had to be taken by helicopter. One of those was a sheriff's deputy. Yeah, a vehicle hit him, nearly sending him through a windshield. That deputy was airlifted from the scene to an area hospital with two broken legs, a broken arm and head injuries. Officials there tell our sister station KPRC that there were nearly 80,000 people in attendance. That is an increase that they've seen over the past few years. Back here at home, the first time was a huge success, so they did it again. A Ukrainian owned cheesecake shop here in San Antonio offering a helping hand to the Ukraine. Ukrainian Armed Forces. The Cheesecake Shop is donating all of its sales from today to Ukraine. Ukraine has been under siege by Russian forces for almost three months now. The Cheesecake Shop was open from 10 until 2 this afternoon at the Pearl's Farmer's Market. And once again, sales were through the roof. Most important to the Ukrainians running that fundraiser is seeing the community show up. Whomever we address our needs, they help. And this is what, the, what really gives us hope that Ukraine is not alone in the world. Now, if you're not able to make it out to that fundraiser today at the Pearl, you can still help. There are details right now on our website. Just look for this story on Kesa.com. That cheesecake is delicious. Mm -hmm. All right, it's an initiative to help dogs find a forever home, even if it's out of state. Coming up where these dogs are heading and which organizations are making it possible. Thirty-four dogs boarded a plane this morning here in San Antonio to head to their new homes. SA Pets Alive combines their Heading Home Transport program with another program called Dog is My Co-Pilot. Pretty interesting. Over the next two weeks, those dogs will be able to find their forever homes across three different straits. Some will be headed to uh, Wyoming, others to Montana and Colorado. Right now, two San Antonio animal shelters are completely out of space and are in desperate need of foster families. This after an influx of people returning pets that they got during the pandemic. SA Pets Alive wants to remind people how important it is to consider fostering a forever friend in this time of need. We really need the help of our community to just um, encourage them to adopt and just to um, open up their homes for, uh, so that these animals can be saved. And at shelters across San Antonio that have pets that desperately need to be adopted, the city of San Antonio said yesterday their cat room is full for the first time in a while. Whether it's a cat or a dog, if you're considering it, we have all of the information to adopt or foster on our website. Uh, I'll uh, vouch for the cats for a second. I have a rescue cat and he's pretty great. So if you have any he's kitty questions, cutie. let me know. Courtney's a kitty mama as well. So we and so is Tim. Covered. That's true. A kitty papa. We, we, we stay in our separate homes. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> you still have a little love for the uh, cat. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Well, oh my gosh, it's so great out there today. I hope you've been able to enjoy the aquifer. Seems to be responding to some rain that fell yesterday. It's up seven tenths of a foot. Also because of yesterday's rain, mold are moderate today. Grass and pigweed, though, are both low. More rain chances in the coming days. We'll talk about it coming up next. For the first time in what feels like two weeks, it didn't feel like you were walking on the surface of Mercury when you walked outside today. <laughs> I actually yeah. forgot and I walked outside and I was like, oh yeah, oh, it's man. not miserable. I woke up, my wife had a coat on. I was like, is it that chilly out? She's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, that's, that's a little funny. much. That's funny. That's a little over the top, but.
That's it was nice. Funny. I Very mean, nice. Embrace it, embrace it while while we can, I guess. Oh my gosh, it was so nice out there today. Unfortunately, it can't last forever, and we will start to warm things back up. But we're staying away from the record high temperature territory that we've been living through for really the past couple of weeks. Check out today's almanac. Uh, we made it up to 86 this afternoon. Uh, this will be our first day this month where the high temperature has been below average. Our average this time of year is 88, only up to 86 with uh, some sun working in this afternoon. Compared to this time yesterday, temperatures are down some 15 to 20 degrees, and that puts us in the 80s across South Central Texas. It is a little warm in spots, 89 Pleasanton, 88 Catula, 86 up in New Braunfels, and 82 in Rock Springs, but man, certainly not nearly as hot as it's been the past couple of weeks. This evening is going to be very pleasant. We'll have an east-northeasterly breeze in place, mostly clear skies becoming a bit more part Partly cloudy as we get closer to midnight temperatures slowly falling through the 70s. Humidity is not terribly high uh, this evening, so it is going to be pretty comfortable out there. Hope you can enjoy a current look at satellite and radar shows no rain across South Central Texas, but we do have kind of a mixed bag of cloud cover, some mid and high level clouds, especially some high clouds starting to work in from the west and we do look west to our next chance of showers and thunderstorms. What I'm showing you here are pieces of rain making energy. So anywhere you see the red or the orange, that's rain making energy lift in the atmosphere that helps to produce and sustain showers and even thunderstorms. Our weather pattern through the first half of this week is going to be very unsettled such that the flow in the upper levels of the atmosphere will bring in these little pieces of rain making energy kind of sporadically over the course of the next few days, Monday into Tuesday, even continuing into Wednesday before our weather pattern settles down a bit for the back half of this week into the upcoming weekend. So we've got more rain chances coming, scattered showers and thunderstorms late tomorrow into tomorrow night, a little bit of a lull on Tuesday, and then we pick back up with a scattering of thunder showers Tuesday night into Wednesday before rain chances fall out of the forecast. So through Wednesday night, here's what we're looking at as far as rainfall potential goes. Anywhere you see the purple color here, especially the darker purples, that's rainfall potential of more than two inches. Again, we're going to spread this out over about three days here through Wednesday night. Higher totals, three inches plus. That's going to be up closer to the Brazos Valley and into parts of East Texas. But Hill Country, you're looking at an inch to an inch and a half. Some spots across southern Bear County off to the southeast of San Antonio, Seguin, Nixon, Floresville, Gonzales. You all could see some rainfall totals over the next few days closer to two inches of rain. I want to walk you through the setup for tomorrow, though, because we do have a risk for some severe storms, mainly along I-35 north of Highway 90 and then west out into the hill country. That's where some scattered severe storms will be possible as we get into the afternoon, evening and nighttime hours tomorrow. So we're jumping ahead a bit with the future cast 5 p.m. tomorrow. Storms will originate out to the west and then they'll move east as we get into Monday evening and Monday night. So that's why the severe weather risk is a little bit higher out to the west across parts of the hill country. Now we expect these storms to start to fire up in the afternoon, depending on how fast they move, they could get to us a little sooner. So we'll have to watch the timing really closely here as we get into tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. But just keep in mind that as far as your rain chances go on Monday, they'll start to pick up late in the afternoon, early in the evening, and then peak late tomorrow night. And there could be a couple of strong to severe storms. So be sure to check in with the weather team tomorrow for the very latest. High temperatures tomorrow, mid to upper. 80s, and that's about where we stay through the end of the week. We start to get closer to the 90s by the start of the weekend as the sun really comes back out. Guys. No, it's not 100. There, well, there you go. Okay. Thank you, Katie. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, we could deal with that. Though. All right, Larry's back today. We're talking <laughs> high school baseball playoffs. Yeah, so last season, Smithson Valley and Reagan met up in the third round and the Rangers won. Well, this year they met in the third round again, and this time the Reagan Rattlers won. And because of that, Reagan is headed back to the regional semis. And in the bigs, the Astros and Rangers closed out their series today. Coming up. Initially, I thought our pitcher was going to cut off the ball, so I yelled at him not to. It's a little easier than it was. Time kind of slows down in those big moments like that, so I mean, it was, it was pretty fun, though. 
Blanco catcher Dylan LaRue made a great defensive play at the plate in the bottom of the fifth to help end a Marion rally as the Panthers advance to the next round of the playoffs in Big Board Sports. For the first time since 2019, the Reagan baseball team is heading to the UIL Class 6A Regional Semifinals. The Rattlers took down the regional reigning regional champs, Smithson Valley, 2-1 in Game 1 on Thursday in 3-2 in eight innings Friday night. Senior Tegan Peoples proved invaluable in the win. He drove in the game-winning run on the top of the eighth before closing the game out on the mound. And it didn't come easy, though. The Rangers put two runners on with no outs and looked primed to force a third game. But Peoples found a way to get the job done. To lead him off, I threw an outside ball, so I missed my shot, so then I had to give him a honey ball right down the middle, and he smoked it down the line, and then I just told myself I need to make pitches for the next three outs to get it done, and I did. You know, he had a couple chances early, and it didn't work out. Gets the hit late, and then, you know, he's, he's on the mound to close it out, and, and we've been using him as our closer, and he's our go-to guy, and, you know, Billy did a good job to, to get us to where we were, and, you know, like I said, and we made some plays, too, uh, to help it out. It, it was, it was all-around team effort. Reagan will take on Eagle Pass in the fourth round next week. The Eagles eliminate O'Connor two games to one. The Blanco baseball team punched their tickets to the Class 3A fourth round with a 9-2 victory against Marion Saturday afternoon, securing a third round series victory two games to one. The Panthers rebounded from a 2-0 loss on Friday by putting nine runs on the board, two of those coming in the first inning, and they led 5-0 after three. Head coach Brian White had confidence that his team would bounce back, but the team admits that the fast start was huge for their confidence. Second game in the series, we didn't have, we didn't really, we didn't hit the ball very well, so we didn't have anything clicking for us, and I guess that just set the tone for us, and we got things moving. We kind of just flipped a switch and told ourselves like we got to go out there with a dif different attitude uh, and just don't let like one out again our heads early in the game. We got to uh, like we got to keep the fundamentals rolling, got to have uh, as few errors as possible, keep the bats as hot as possible. Our pitchers got their strikes most importantly. Next up, Blanco will face Bishop in the regional semis. So last night around eight, Tiger Woods informed the PGA of America he is withdrawing from the 2022 PGA Championship. Tiger struggled in the third round, carding his career worst score at the event with a nine over 79 at Southern Hills Country Club in Tulsa. Tiger was playing in his second major since an almost 17 month layoff after suffering a serious leg injury in a car crash in February 2021. Saturday was cold and windy in Tulsa and you can just tell Tiger was in a lot of pain. PGA of America President Jim Richardson praised Tiger for his valiant effort to compete at Southern Hills and wished him the best as he continues to recover from his injuries. So here's a look at the final round. It is now over with, but a playoff is needed between Justin Thomas and Will Zalatoris. We will have much more on the PGA Championship tonight on Instant Replay. The Dallas Mavericks are fined $100,000 as they continue to violate league rules for bench decorum, the NBA announced today. The league says on multiple occasions, several players and a member of the coaching staff stood for an extended period in the Mavericks team bench area, stood away from the team bench, and were on or encroaching upon the playing court during game action. In Dallas, 126-117 loss at Golden State in Game 2, the Western Conference Finals Friday night. It marks the third time the Mavs have been fined for bench decorum violations this postseason. The fines have totaled totaled 175,000, doubling on each occasion. So Dallas will host Golden State tonight at eight and the Warriors lead two games to none. Texas at Houston this afternoon, wrapping up that four game series. Bottom of the fifth, Jordan Alvarez drives one deep to center field and off the wall for an RBI double, easily scoring Alex Bregman to make a 3-1 Astros. And Houston wins 5-2, taking three of four games from the Rangers. In Texas league play, the Missions beat the Rockhounds today 7-3, taking five of six in that series. The Missions are off tomorrow and will open up a six game road trip Tuesday at the Frisco Rough Riders. UTSA baseball will open its Conference USA Championship run with a first round matchup with fourth seed Florida Atlantic Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. The winner of the game will face number one seed and host Southern Miss. It's a double elimination tournament. Turning to the French Open, Coco Goff didn't let 10 double faults, 12 break points, or a warning from the chair umpire about receiving coaching from her dad disrupt her progress into the second round at the second major of the year. The 18-year-old American Open in Paris with a 7-5, 6 love victory over Canadian qualifier Rebecca Marino. I mean, I, I did this. Hold on. I ain't getting into this. Oh, no, no, no. no. I, I understand, but I just wanted... 
is this change? It's because social media and media put it out. I got it. It's the exclusive interview that's well, just as passionate as a speech the day before. Tonight on Instant Replay, Jimbo Fisher sits down with Greg Simmons to talk about the Nick Saban accusations that were front and center in college football this week. Don't miss it tonight, 11 p.m. after the night beat. And we'll be right back.